You are listening to the Cheetah Culture USA show, the only news and podcast in English about AS Cheetadella. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cheetah Culture USA show, episode number 147, coming to you on Thursday, November 7th. It's deja vu for Cheetadella as they get another late win against Palermo in similar style and in the exact same month as last season as Luca Pandolfi, yes, the same goal scorer in that win last year, getting the goal once again in the 90th minute to get Cittadella really a smash-and-grab victory against Palermo in Sicily on last Sunday. And that maybe is the start of a new chapter for Cittadella? Is this the tr- is this a time of a turning point? We'll have to see as they get ready for one more game before the November international break, and that's against Cesena at home this Sunday. So lots to get into in this podcast here. Um, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at CheatGotUSA. You could follow all our stuff there, um, YouTube as well. Uh, we got updates there. And CheatGotUSA.com for recaps, news articles, all that stuff um, on the website, CheatGotUSA.com. Yo, please go check it out. Now... Wow. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? A smash and grab victory against Palermo. 1-0 on Sunday. Cittadella getting their first win in seven games. Um, Their first win really since August 31st. A 1-0 win against Moldena. And that really stopped a really poor run of form for Cittadella that let them slip into the relegation zone. They are not quite out of it just yet. They're 17th place with 12 points, still in the relegation playout. But, um, you know, despite what the standings are saying, despite, um, you know, what it means in the table, I think this is really a, a morale boosting win more than anything. And really, it just, it's quite incredible that it happened in the exact same way as last season. If you don't if you don't know what I'm talking about, last season Cittadella went to Palermo also in November. This actually happened on November 12th of 2023 and this recent game happened on the 3rd, if I recall. Yes, on the 3rd of November. So, really less than a year later, even though it's in the same month. Uh Cittadella going into stoppage time with the score at 0-0 hanging in there, and all of a sudden, Luca Pandolfi, out of nowhere, scores in front of the Curva in Palermo, getting a 1-0 win in Sicily at the Stadio Renzo Barbera. Out of nothing, where we thought this was going to be another 0-0 game, um, would have been a good result, just given you know the, the travel, the, the environment having to play it in, against two teams like Sampdoria and Palermo going into the going into the week uh going into the after the 3-0 defeat against Cadarese the weekend before this would have been um you know a, a good point however it got better because Pandolfi scored in the 90th minute off an assist from substitute uh, um Delicio I believe it was um yes Francesco Delicio getting his first assist as well for him this game was was interesting because I think Cittadella did get a bit lucky in the first half. It could have easily been 3-0 for Palermo in this game. Elan Castretti, I think, was the man of the match, despite, um, you know, Pandolfi will get all the credit for getting the game winner, getting, you know, the, the goal that mattered the most. But I think Castretti really deserved to be MVP in that match because he said he made five saves in that and... Really, a lot of those came in the first half where it seemed like at any moment Palermo were going to score. Uh, Insigne had a few chances. Brunori did not start for, for the Rossonero there, um, but it was Insigne who was getting a lot of those chances in behind. I, I think the defense could have been a little better for Cittadella as they pull up the lineup right now. Um, but, you know, Del Canto went with another uh, three in the back, so it was a 3-5-2 formation. It was, let me just read you real quick now. Um, yes, so, you know, you, you you expected more more or less the same. You got Pavan in the back, uh, Carisoni, Salvi, and then in the midfield, you got Vita, Amatucci. Tronkin got another start. I thought he played pretty good again um, as that deep line center mid. 
then you got off him uh, Branca, Masangelo on the left, and then up top the you got Rabi and Pandolfi, who uh, as immediately after he scored, he got substituted off. So it was quite a way to end it. But yeah, I mean, first half, I think Chitrella got lucky to not go down. And if you look at the expected goals from, from this match, excuse me, um, if you look at the expected goals, you would see that really it was, I don't know how Chitarella won this game. It was uh, 2.3 expected goals for Palermo in that game. They, they had calculated one goal, expected goal, in the first half alone. Um, and Chitarella in the entirety of the game got uh, 0.7. So really, really, this is a definition of a smash and grab victory for Chitarella. Not creating much, especially in the in the first in in the second half, excuse me, and just being able to get that last minute goal really feels like um, this this moment I think had been brewing for a while. They Chitarella really needed a moment like this after a really difficult start to the season. They had many opportunities to get that win or get that result that didn't quite seem like um, it went through. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, a few examples, but just in, you know, in 2024 in general, it's, as you know, as we said many times in this podcast, it has not been a friendly year for Chitarella. This was only the, the fifth win in 2000, in the year of 2024. And, you know, ironically, two of those wins came against Palermo. Uh, if you recall the game in January, but those th there's been a lot of times this season specifically where just it does not seem like the the soccer gods are not favoring Chitarella. Um If you recall, first game of the season, two one loss against Salernitana, uh, two goals in stoppage time to turn a win into a defeat. Then obviously the the, the biggest one was the three nil defeat against Pisa, which was a one one draw on on the field, but in the court uh, overturning that so it was a 3-0 automatic forfeit win for Pisa so that's automatically um, that hard fought result out of the window then you know you got the Mantova defeat another late goal 6-1 um, defeat not a, I'm, I'm not saying that was unlucky or anything that was just not um, you know just everything going wrong for Cittadella there uh, Guarini sacked you got a new coach the Cosenza match, the the last home match or the the the, the home match before the last one against Cosenza, da, Alessandro Dal Canto's first game, Nicola Pavan scoring in the last minute only to get it overturned by VAR. And if you thought that was the turning moment in that season, well, the referee cancels it out and it's more heartbreak and more um, despair for Cittadella. Same thing, not getting a result against Sampdoria, even though it, that was also a very winnable game. I think this moment in Palermo is really a result of a, a lot of bad luck. And it finally, Cittadella finally get a break in in that run of poor, of that really poor result and, and really bad luck. So I think this was really well-deserved um, from a Cittadella standpoint. And who knows? Maybe maybe this is the turning point in the season. I'm not going to speak too soon about it because <laughs> they could definitely you know, lose against Jacena and then we're going to be saying, oh, here we go again. But I'll give you an example because last season when Cittadella got that victory, the smash and grab victory against Palermo, and that's when um, Luca Pandolfi scored in the final minutes, they went on a game, uh, they went on a run of seven games following that that time and that included five wins and two draws and that was that run of form put them as high as third before it all came crashing down uh, in the second half of the season so you never know what these results can do to a team mentally and just given that result how it unfolded Chitarella not playing a particularly good game Castrati having to bail them out a few times getting that last minute goal I think was really this, it could be very, very important come the end of the season when you look back and you say that's when the season, that's when the when our season changed. Like I said, still very early to talk about this. I really shouldn't be talking more about it because um, you know obviously they got another game to focus on on Sunday. But I'm just saying that it's totally in the realms of possibility. Um, 
Speaking of another much needed moment, it was also Pandolfi who had first got his first goal since April 6, um, and really took it well. Interesting thing about Pandolfi as well is that it was the third time in his career that he has scored a winning goal in stoppage time at the Stadio Renzo Barbera against Palermo. Twice he has done it now with Cittadella. Yeah, obviously, he did it last year, he did it this year. And in 2020, in Serie C, when he was with Turis, he did score in the final minutes to get another victory in Palermo. So that is now three times he has scored against Palermo in Palermo at the Stadio Renzo Barbera. And he is, once again, um, if you recall, back in January, he did score again against Palermo, this time at home. So he's got three goals against them, four goals in his career against the Rossonero. So it's really, I'm sure the, the people down in Sicily do not do not like this man. But um, the rematch is scheduled to be uh, actually the last match of 2024. So Cittadella starts the year with Palermo and they end the year with Palermo. That's going to be on the 29th of December. That's a Sunday at the Stadio Pier Cesare. Tombolato. That is, that's kind of all I have. That's kind of all I wrote down for um, this game. Um, once again, just really a smash and grab victory for Cittadella. It's really um, a moment where, it, it, like I said, it, it could change a lot of things. So we'll have to see uh, what happens in the future and this upcoming game against uh, Cesena on Sunday, which we will get into in a little bit. But um, first, I kind of want to run down the match day 12 of Serie B. You had some results. I did, um, if you haven't checked our Speaking Serie B episode with Elia, the Italian guy, it is on our YouTube channel, Chitacach USA um, show. You could uh, watch it there. We are live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. European time. That is 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Also, if you want to watch it on demand or... Um, you know, when it's not live, you can as well. So go check it out. We go much more in depth in all these results and all these details. But looking at match day 12 in Serie B, we are really over a quarter of the way through, I believe. Um, yes, let me just do the math real quick. Uh, but yeah, we are 31% of the way through, almost really a third of the way through. It'll be a third after this match day 13. But Match day 12, no, there, there was a lot of interesting results. Uh, Bari drawing 2-2 against Regina. Bari were up 2-0 in the 80th minute and still managed to draw. So they are they have two wins, eight draws, and two losses. And if you recall, after the international break, Cittadella does play at the Stadio San Nicola. So that'll be something to keep an eye out on. But the top three, uh, Pisa, Sassuolo, and Spezia, they all won, and they all created some gaps between uh, Palermo, thanks to Cittadella's win, and uh, Cremonese, who were defeated by Pisa on Saturday or on, on Sunday, excuse me. And this was a big win for Pisa. This was a really, really tough test going into Cremona against a team that had um, been doing well since Corini had taken over Cremonese, and being able to get that win, a uh, 3-1 win, it was a really, really statement win for them. Puts them 27 points on the board. Uh, two points behind them are Sassuolo, who got a narrow but important win against Mantova at home. And then Spezia also getting a 1-0 win at home, this time against Modena. So they are... Um, I, I don't expect them to really pull away that much. It's still... That's a very long season, and... That's just really not how Serie B works in this way. Um, but I do expect Sassuolo to finish in that top two. Uh, I think Pisa, if, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, I think they're going to eventually get that spot. So um, it'll be interesting to see. Spezia still hasn't lost the game. Six wins, six draws, zero defeats. Still the only team in Serie B without a defeat. So that is going to be um, just... Very. This is this is what we love. This is what the Serie B that we really love to enjoy. But um, another two coaching changes actually uh, for Modena, uh, Bisoli getting sacked, and for Sutiro um, Valente, who was who was sacked, and Zaffaroni taking his place for uh, Sutiro, 
who were defeated by Chesena, who are Chitadela's next opponents, who currently sit in fourth place, 18 points uh, on the board, five wins, three draws, and four losses for uh, Mignani's team. Why don't we why don't we get into this game on Sunday? As I'm already kind of talking about Chisena right now, we're gonna go ahead and preview it. So Sunday, November 10th, 3 p.m. Um, European time. That is 9 a.m. Eastern time in the United States. So Sunday morning, grab your coffee, grab your donut, grab your uh, whatever b- breakfast pastry, a brioche if you can find a good brioche here in the United States or a, a good um, cappuccino like they do in Italy. Um, this will be a 9 a.m. kickoff time on the East Coast. This is another chance for a home game. And, you know, I argue that this is, once again, um, this is a good opportunity for Cittadella. Maybe their best chance in a while. And I'll tell you why. Even though Cesena are in fourth place, they are they have one of the best attacks in the league with 20 goals um, scored. Uh, Christian Schependi league, leading goal scorer with seven goals in 11 games. However, Chesena are the team with one of the worst defense. Um, they are actually, yeah, they one of the worst defense with 18 goals conceded despite their 20 goals scored. So it seems like they score a lot of goals and they give up a lot of goals. And that's, um, you know, it's quite impressive that they are in fourth place just given how that's been going. But, you know, Chesena has been doing very w- good. We expected them to do well this season after having a really impressive campaign in Serie G last season. However, the main stat that really stands out is they are tied for the worst road team in the league. They have 18 points on the board. However, 16 out of the 18 te- of the points have come at home. So they've only had two points on the road. Those are two draws and three losses on the road so far. Zero wins. They have not uh, done well on the road. But if you compare that to Cittadella's record at home in 2024, only one win and with 13 games without a home win. So I think if the time is now for Cittadella, the the time has to be now because coming off that win against Palermo, coming off that draw against Sampdoria, where they, they could have won, but it was still a you know a solid performance, I'd say. I think the momentum is really in their favor against a, a vulnerable Chesena side. I I can expect goals in this game. I think, you know, Cittadella is still, I think, are, I, I still think Cittadella is, um, how would I, I describe this? I'm not uh, thinking, I'm not processing right now. Um, I, I do think Cittadella's attack still needs improvement. I think, you know, this, this result in Palermo doesn't distract you from the fact that there's only been one goal scored in the last four games. But just given Chesena's leaky defense and considering their attacking power, I could definitely see a high-scoring game in this game. Like, that, that's surprising to say because we haven't seen a lot of goals scored by Cittadella this season. Um, they haven't even scored more than one goal in a game this season. So um, if it, it, it would be a lot for them to, to score more than one in this game. But against, like I said, against a team who are, who are conceding goals uh, fast and aren't good on the road, I think this is definitely a, a very winnable game for Cittadella. And let's see if they could ride off this momentum because if they could get another result, ideally a win, but even a draw I don't think would be a, a necessarily bad result. This would give them you know, two, uh, uh, three games going into this international break against Sampdoria, Palermo, and Cesena, three teams that were in the top eight of Serie B. Sampdoria isn't anymore, but they were going into the game. This would be a a really good stepping stone and a a foundation to go into, going into the long uh, winter month, a winter stretch that runs all the way to the end of the year. And they get a little bit of a break, and then they really start again. But like I said, they still a lot of tough teams to play against. They got Bari coming from the international break uh, on November 24th. Then they host Juve Stavia away against Spezia, home against Cremonese. So there's a lot of difficult teams, a lot of difficult opponents being played. So if they could get another result in this, 
I still think they they need that home win. They they just need that home win to release that pressure to get that thing off their back. Just because even if they do get a draw, even if they are getting a good result, a good performance in this, it's still be not it's still not a win. And that would be 14 games without a home win. And that's just the pressure just keeps on building. Still just saying no home wins since January and we are already in November is, is quite painful to say for, for a Chitadella standpoint. So definitely they they need to find a way to win. They just they have to. So that's that's what all we could hope for right now. This is the first meeting between Chisena and Chitarella since 2018. Chitarella doing the double over uh, Chisena in the 2017-18 season, both home and away. They actually scored four goals at home last time they played. So, like I said, very winnable game for, for Chitarella. They're going to have to keep an eye out on Shipendi, who has seven goals already this season. Also, for former player Mikro Antonucci, who is always uh, dangerous in when he plays, as well as uh, Daniele Donnarumma, who's had uh, good performances here. Actually, very interesting that I, I didn't quite realize until right now is um, Jonathan Klinsman, who is who is American, who is who was born in the U.S., is does play for Chesena and has started in these last two games, which is I I did not know that until very recently. So that's and also he is the son of former. U.S. men's national team boss, uh, Jurgen Klinsmann. So his goalkeeper currently playing, <laughs> his uh, son is currently playing for, for Chesena in this, and he's, and he's uh, played the last last two games. So that's uh, very, I, I, I did not know that until recently. So that is going to be uh, very interesting. Yeah, playing for, you know, LA Galaxy um, and Hertha Berlin. So very very interesting. Let's see if he gets a start in this because that would be that'd be very good. Another American playing against Chitadella, but still no Americans that has played for Chitadella. So we're hoping one day that will that dream will become a reality. Reality. So um, let's see about that. But anyway, wrapping up this episode, Chitadella facing off against Chesena this Sunday, November tenth, three p.m. European time, nine a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a uh, Sunday morning kickoff here in the United States. So grab a coffee, turn on the game, and enjoy it. So for me, that is going to be it for this week. Please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube at CheatCouchUSA, and visit our website at CheatCouchUSA.com for more information, news, articles, all that stuff at CheatCouchUSA.com. That's it for me. I will see you next week recapping the game and going into the international break. And as always, Forza Cheetah. Thank you for listening to the Chitgach USA show. If you liked it, please share and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Chitgach USA. See you next time, and remember, Forza Chita. <laughs>